We start our journey in the middle of the sea, where a rugged pirate was successful in his mission. He approaches his mothership, greeted with the cheers of his fellow brother. The captain approaches with glee in his eye and opens a chest. It's ticket to the SpongeBob SquarePants movie! Now live action can be very tricky when it comes to being in an animated movie. I gotta say that it gave a very fun touch to the overall feel of the film. Makes me sense like anything can be possible. Who lives in a pineapple under the sea, the one the only Spongebob Squarepants, voiced by Tom Kenny. The film opens up to a dilemma, the Krusty Krab is surrounded by police and bystanders. Eugene Krabs, who is Clancy Brown in real life, is freaking out. Spongebob arrives and it is revealed that a customer ordered a Krabby Patty with cheese, but the cheese is missing. Spongebob comforts the customer and resolves the problem. In the end of the scene, it is revealed that everything was a dream. After a montage of an energetic morning routine on March 7th, Spongebob is off to the opening of the second Krusty Krab. He is waiting in the front row next to Squidward Tentacles, who is Rutger Bumpass. Mr. Krab reveals that the new manager is Squidward. Heartbreak falls upon our yellow friend, and so he retreats. An individual who will not be attending the second opening of the Krusty Krab is Plankton voiced by Sir Lauren. The inner rivalry has pushed Plankton to try everything and anything to obtain the Krabby Patty formula. All hope is lost until his computer wife, Karen, voiced by Jill Taylor, reveals that he still has one more chance. Plan Z. A prominent figure in Bikini Bottom is King Neptune. He is voiced by the famous Jeffrey Tambor. By his side is his wholehearted daughter Mindy, voiced by Scarlett Johansson. Fun fact, Mindy would be Scarlett Johansson's very first voice acting job. And I gotta say, she did a great job. Now, the king is stern, but he has a weakness. His thinning hair. His only defense is the royal crown. This clause would be the foundation for Plan Z. We now find Spongebob in one of his favorite places, Goofy Goobers. He is still feeling down about not getting the manager position at the second Krusty Krab. His best friend Patrick Starr, who is Bill Fagerback, reminds him that he is no kid, but a man. And after some intoxicating ice cream, Spongebob begins to loosen up. After a wild night, he awakens up in a blur, and in the back of his mind, he knows that he's been wronged out of the position. There is a bone to be picked. The second phase of Plan Z will be revealed. King Neptune and Mindy are traveling to have a talk with Eugene. The mood changes and becomes very tense. Neptune shows evidence. I stole your crown, signed Eugene Krabs. For this crime, the sentence will be dealt at the end of a flaming trident. A moment of mercy will arise from the help of Mindy. Six days is what Spongebob and Patrick will have in order to retrieve the crown from Shell City. This scene will set off the mood for the remainder of the film. Plankton has spent a very long time pursuing the secret formula. His envy blinds him from the moral aspects of his actions, making him a very scary foe. With the help of his Karen, the flow of hungry customers begin to fill the chum bucket. As a promotional item, he includes the chum helmet. Very quickly, everyone would be sporting this fashion trend. Out of everyone who could challenge the evil genius of Plankton, it would be Squidward who would connect the dots. Never mess with a person's checks. In a moment of desperation, another phase of Plan Z is revealed, turning residents into servants. Hello everyone, I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thank you all for the support, it's been a huge help. The digital download for the Spongebob Squarepants movie is on the screen. More love will be heading your way. Let's get back into it. Patrick and Spongebob are tasked with the recovery of the royal crown in Shell City. During the way, they would encounter obstacles that will challenge their integrity. Beginning with a tussle in the biker bar, challenging their inner goober. Next would be a vicious creature. The old saying that there is always a bigger fish in the ocean would be demonstrated. And with the help of a pep talk from Mindy, both our heroes will be recharged and parade on in their journey. In order to prevent the success of Tom Kenny and Bill Fagerback, Plankton will send a tough assassin named Dennis, who was voiced by Alec Baldwin, who will be riding a motorcycle while wearing boots with spikes. Over a few short scenes, we the audience begin to develop an opinion of how dangerous Dennis can be before he even confronts the duo. So when they have their first encounter, it's very tense. He even manifests a mustache with his pure manliness. But everything will take a turn when the Cyclops stomps down on Dennis and takes Spongebob and Patrick hostage. They are moved to a fish tank. Fear begins to take hold when they realize that the victims of the Cyclops are all around. The victims are dressed up in costumes with googly eyes for comedic effect. And now they are laid under a heat lamp. And with their last will, they begin to sing the Goofy Goober theme song, streaming one last tear of hope. After a collective cry from the audience, the sense of defeat is stronger than ever. 
Faith will have a different story as the tear shorts out the plug, creating a plume of smoke setting off the fire alarm. In a flash, our heroes are back, as well as the rest of the victims in Shell City. The tides will turn in favor of the underdog. The Cyclops is no more. Time is short. The problem of logistics is now the biggest obstacle. But like a gift from above, David Hasselhoff, played by David Hasselhoff, will assist and take Spongebob and Patrick back to Bikini Bottom. After one last tussle with Dennis, they arrive. And with the help of David Hasselhoff's powerful pecs, they reach the Krusty Krab. In a final desperate attempt, Plankton reminds Spongebob that he is no hero, no man, and no manager. In a moment of truth, Spongebob accepts his flaws and embraces what he is. He reaches deep down to the energy that drives him. His soul is that of a goofy goober. He breaks free, releasing the rock and roller he always was. His aura becomes too powerful, breaking everyone from the mind control that Plankton had. The film ends, reminding the audience that the right amount of passion, drive, and explosive energy, dreams can manifest into reality. Stay tuned for more videos. This is not a critic. Mad love.